Sweden in January and it is dark. What could possibly brighten up the existence of this depressing darkness? Doing a car review? In the dark? This particular car are equipped with a black carbon fiber interior together with the black leather interior and the black exterior. I must say it looks beautiful in the dark. Luckily we do get some daylight in Sweden. So we have some few hectic hours to discuss this beautiful car. It is a 911 Carrera 4S called 991.2. This is the second generation of the 991. So I was thinking that we should talk about the elephant that has actually been walking around the table all over the internet forum. The discussion is that it has a 3 liter turbo engine on the contrary of the aspirated engine that has been in the previous 991 version. The thing is that um, I am a bit disappointed on all the comments in the forum. Because I doubt, and this is something I really believe in, I doubt that everyone has actually driven one. Because if they had, they would have a different opinion on the engine. Driving around with the uh, 911 is um, amusement park. Uh, especially coming into the corner, braking, coming in. Oh, just and then just push the throttle, getting out of the corner, and you really, really get excited over the crest. Heavy brake, downshift, coming over the crest, upshift again, and then moving forward into the corner. Heavy braking, heavy braking. Oh, Alpine Sport winter tires, give me more. <laughs> this is driving pleasure at its best. The elephant may walk around the tables shouting out his dissatisfaction as long as he or she wants. But the introduction to turbocharged engines in the 911 base models has not affected the true 911 driving pressure. In fact, the throttle response are as good as it gets. If you are used to a natural aspirated engine and are having problem to adjust your driving to the millisecond delay you nat naturally have in a turbocharged engine, then I recommend you to stick with the Vintage 911, wait until the 911 become electrified with the extreme throttle response. What's great about this car also is it has a 4 behind it, especially if you are in the darkest of Sweden where winter is a fact half of the year. This really really puts the car into a proper winter car. Please note that all Porsches could be driven in the winter. For some reason, many people say that don't drive your Porsches on the winter and say, oh, they will get destroyed. Absolutely not. This is a German produced Porsche. It means that the build quality is a class of its own. What's important is that you equip your car with proper winter tires. The Michelin Alpine Sports has really made impression on me and I have been driven them before and I've actually forgotten how good they are. I've tested them on ice, a bit of snow and today um, with dry drive B roads. The benefit of buying a Porsche it is always possible to specify the car accordingly to your uh, needs. This is a perfect example of a daily driver. It has, it has not been lowered because if you're going to drive on the winter, the, the height of the car has um, importance, especially when it gets 10 to 20 centimeters of snow. You don't want to be stuck underneath, so you need a bit of height. Um, also, uh, the 991 has the possibility to be equipped with a lift system and if you're going to drive in the winter that could also be a pricey option for you to get even more clearance when you drive in the winter. I actually know the average age of Porsche employees in the design department. It is around 40. The reason I know that is that they still think that colored calipers is cool. I think that creates limitation in selection of colors on the car. If you have a jet black like this, it will look great. But 
other colors will interfere with the red, guard red calipers. I think the worst example I have seen is a solid blue with ceramic brakes that changes the color to yellow. Even though I like the Swedish colors on the 911, I think uh, it could be questioned. So uh, what I would like to have is black calipers standard on all cars. We know the efficiency of Porsche brakes. We don't have to brag about it. And that gives us much higher variety of choosing or the right color that we like. Buying a new Porsche today gives you some difficult options to select from. Should I go manual or PDK? The PDK gives you the speed out of your vehicle. Um, all Porsches has better performance with the PDK and yes, it is much faster to shift gears with the PDK. It also in combination with the Sport Chrono package, it gives you an extra button in the middle where you can optimize the gearbox and uh, uh, throttle response with just one push of the button. Like in this example, I'm approaching a car, I want to pass the car and then obviously in, to avoid fibbling around and switching mode etc. I can get a 20 second of full performance out of the vehicle. So uh, just take a finger, push it, full response and overtake. Oh, and that is how, how um, 420 horsepower goes to maximum. And also, uh, if you one benefit of driving the PDK gearbox is actually that you will get one hand free to scratch your gender. And if that is what you need to do during driver, that is a perfect opportunity. This wouldn't be a proper review if we don't look at the lights. Humidity will always come inside miraculously in all cars. This particular car has 1,500 kilometers on it and already we can clearly see that Porsche, as usual, has some humidity problem inside the, the um, lights. I'm sorry to say, but that is the heritage of owning a 911. But please, don't get upset about it. Think of it as um, a feature of the extremely nice design that Porsche always creates with the lightings. Well, except perhaps for the front in the 996. And please don't get angry with me, but we all can agree that that was a chapter of the design history that could be questioned. Cornering the 911, even though that you're not driving fast, is always an experience. It really gives you the, the pleasure of driving. That, that is what it's all, all about. If you want to brag or show off in the center of the time, buy an Italian car. If, you, if you're a driver and, and a driver's man or woman, Porsche is the way to go. It's focused on the driver and it's focused on the experience of driving a car. And if you really, really want to, want to get that experience, I really could recommend the Porsche cars, regardless which version. But the 911 is, is for me at least, one of the top of this range.